Alright guys, today we're going to be talking about using the rational root theorem to identify all roots of a polynomial function. Okay, so remember if you're trying to find the roots or the zeros of a function, there's a couple ways we can go about doing that. Alright, you can try to factor, which in this case doesn't look like an option. Okay, you can try to use the quadratic formula, which again in this case is not an option. Um, we can try to complete the square. Again, not an option. So if you run into a problem like this, you're going to have to use the rational root theorem. Okay? And in order to do this problem, you're going to have to have knowledge of synthetic division. Okay? Um, so if you don't have knowledge of synthetic division, you need to check out my other video that goes into detail okay, about how to go about doing synthetic division. Um, that being said, for those who do have knowledge, let's get into this problem. So the rational root theorem, what is that? Well, that's simply just going to be P over Q, where P is my constant term and Q is my leading coefficient. So in this case, my constant term is negative six. My leading coefficient is four. And all we have to do now is write out the factors of both of them. So my factors of my constant are going to be plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, and plus or minus six, okay? And then we need to write out factors of my leading coefficient, which are going to be plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus four, okay? And then we actually have to go ahead and do this operation out, all right, for each one. So we're going to start at 1, and we're just going to make our way down. So 1 divided by 1, well, that's going to be plus or minus 1. And then staying on this 1, 1 divided by 2, that's going to be plus or minus a half. 1 divided by 4, again, plus or minus 1 over 4. Okay, now moving on to the 2. 2 divided by 1, well, that's plus or minus 2, 2 divided by 2, that's going to be plus or minus 1. And we already have it written, so we do not have to write it again. All right? 2 divided by 4, well again, that's going to reduce to a half, which we already have, so we do not have to write that again. All right? Moving on to the 3, 3 divided by 1, that's going to be plus or minus 3. 3 divided by 2, that's going to be plus or minus 3 over 2, and then 3 divided by 4, so that's plus or minus 3 over 4. Okay, now let's go to the 6. 6 divided by 1, plus or minus 6. 6 divided by 2, well that's just going to be 3, which we already have written, so we don't have to do that again. And then 6 divided by 4, which is going to reduce to 3 over 2. And again, we don't have to write that again because we already have it. So this right here, we'll make a box around it. These are my possible rational roots of this function. Okay? Now notice that it says rational root. Okay? This does not take into account for possible irrational roots. And we will get into that further as we get into this video. Okay? So this is only for possible rational roots. All right? That's important. Now at this point, we can go ahead and use synthetic division all right, to figure out if one of these is actually a root of this function. All right, so if you grab one of these and we do synthetic division, so let's set up synthetic division and then we'll talk about it. So again, you're going to have to have knowledge of synthetic division in order to do this problem. So there we are. Again, just make sure that we didn't skip any terms here that should have a zero. Okay, so for example, we went from x to the fourth, x to the third, x to the second, x, and then our constant. We didn't skip any terms, so we don't have to put any zeros here. All right, and then we're gonna set up our synthetic division bar, and we're gonna pick one of these possible, okay, roots that would work for this function. Now, this is a list of possible roots. They're not all going to work, only some of them. So I'm going to pick start out with 2. Let's see if 2 works. 
And if it works out, our remainder at the end should be zero. If our remainder is zero, that tells us that that is indeed a root of this function. All right, so let's go ahead and do this operation. We bring down the four. Two times four is eight. Okay, and then we have negative 21 and eight. Well, that makes negative 13. And we have negative 13 times two, which is just negative 26. Positive 18, negative 26. Well, that makes negative eight. And then negative eight times two is negative 16. And 19 and negative 16, that's three. And three times two, well, that's going to be six. Okay. Well, we can see that our remainder here is zero. So this tells us that two is in fact a zero or a root of this function. Okay, so I'm gonna write it up here so we don't forget. We'll make a list of all our zeros. So two is definitely a root of this function. Now, the cool thing about synthetic division, we can continue on with this problem. So if we had a remainder of zero, we can keep going down to try to find the other zeros. I don't have to rewrite this all over again. I can pick up right here. So I'm going to make another synthetic division bar. And we're gonna test another possible root. So let's pick negative three over four, let's try that one. Now, I've gone through this problem, so I already know, okay, what's gonna work in here. If you were, you know, you, you had no knowledge of this problem going into it, you would actually have to test these and try to get the zero. So it can be a little bit of work, kind of guessing and checking, all right? But that's what we need to do for given a case like this. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. We're gonna bring down the four, and now four times negative three over four, will be negative three. Then we have negative 13 and negative three, that's negative 16. A negative 16 times a negative three over four, that will be 12, okay? And we have 12 and a negative eight, well that's just going to be four. And then four times negative three over four, well that's going to be negative three. And if you look here, our remainder, right, is zero, so that tells us that this as well is a zero of this function. So let's write it up here as well, negative three over four, okay? Now at this point, remember, when we divide, we're naturally losing a degree. So what I mean by that, we started at x to the fourth, but when we divided it the first time, it now reduced to x to the third. And when we divided it a second time, it's now x to the second. So what this really is here on the bottom, this is really x squared, this is x, and this is our constant term, okay? And now you may be saying, well, let's keep picking, you know, possible roots from here. Well, the problem is, remember, this is only testing for rational roots. We could have an irrational root, and we may be wasting our time, you know, plugging in these, these roots. So a better option here would be to try to factor it now. Okay, because factoring will give us the definite answer. All right, so right now I'm gonna rewrite this as 4x squared, right? Looking right here, and then negative 16x. And then we have plus four, plus four. Okay, and now I'm gonna erase this work so we can continue on. So we know that the zeros so far are two and negative three over four. So let's continue on. And I'm gonna write this nice and big up here so we can get a better view of it. All right, so at this point, we need to try to factor this. Okay, so before we go ahead and try to factor it, Let's see if we can possibly take a term out to make it a little bit easier for us to factor. Well, it looks like they all have a four in common. So let's take out a four. And this will be x squared minus four x and then plus one, okay? So now the part we're concerned about for factoring, and sorry, this is all equal to zero. Remember, because we're solving for the zeros. We're looking at this part now, okay? Can we factor this? Well, if you saw my previous videos on the AC method, let's see if that works. Okay, so A times C here. That 
would just be 1. So what two numbers when you multiply will be 1, but add up to negative 4. And you may realize that those numbers don't exist. So in this case, we need to use the quadratic formula because we cannot factor this. Okay? So we need to use the quadratic formula. And you need to know what that is. So that's written as negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. Okay. And so we're going to plug this guy in and we're going to get those remaining roots. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll do it in black here. So my b value, remember this is, we're going to use a, b, and c, okay? So my b value here is going to be negative 4. Well, when I plug it in here, that will just become a positive 4. So it's 4 plus or minus the square root, well, negative 4, right, I'm looking at the b, negative 4 squared, that's going to be 16, okay? Minus 4, which is a constant, right, that's just part of the formula. AC, well that's 1 times 1, or just 1 here, so it's just going to remain negative 4. And this is all over 2A, so 2 times A, which is just going to be, again, 2, because my A value is 1. So let's go a little bit further. This is 4, plus or minus, well 16 minus 4, that's the square root of 12, all over 2. All right, and we're almost done. Let's just reduce this down, all right, to make it mathematically correct. Um, and actually, before we do that, let's see if we can reduce down this square root. So I'm going to erase this top work right here. So let's look at the square root of 12 and try to break it down. Well, we know that 4 and 3, right, will work. And this is a perfect square, so we get 2. So we can rewrite this as 4 plus or minus 2 square roots of 3. And this is all over 2. Okay, and we do this. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Okay, so our final answer here is going to be 2 plus or minus the square root of 3. Okay? And let's just write our roots now at the bottom here. So our answer to this problem, we just found the zeros, the roots. We have 2. We have negative 3 over 4. We have 2 plus square root of 3. And we have 2 minus square root of 3. And this is our final answer. These are the roots of this function. Okay, so that is finding the roots using the rational root theorem. All right, quite a bit of work. All right, it does take practice, but again, if you're given a problem like this, you're not allowed to use a calculator. You got to do it by hand, right? We're going to have to use the rational root theorem here. And again, you can check this out in your graphing calculator after to make sure you um, did it correctly. Um, but again, this is the rational root theorem.